You know when you invite someone over to play a game, like a board game or a card game, the implication is that you, you'll spend a few hours on the activity and then you'll go your separate ways. Well, I've literally invited people over for tabletop role-playing and sometimes they decline because, quote, I don't have eight hours to spend on a game. That actually makes me really sad because role-playing is a really fun game that I used to do over the lunch breaks at school, way in the back of the school because you weren't actually allowed to do it. But we would play D&D in the back of the school. That's less than an hour of play, and it worked brilliantly. Honestly, I think a short session of D&D is one of the key ways of playing more D&D. For every eight-hour session you don't play because no one has time for that. You can play lots of one hour, two hour sessions here and there, but part of that bargain, for me at least, especially with new players, is being able to create a character really, really fast. That's one of the appeals of the old school renaissance movement, and it's an appeal, I think, of fifth edition if you do it right. Now, if you're like me and you've walked well away from Wizards of the Coast, then for your 5e gameplay, maybe you're playing Tales of the Valiant. You can build a character for Tales of the Valiant in under 12 minutes if you don't believe me. Step one, class and attributes. Okay, so pick a class. They all start on page 22. Turn to that page in the rule book. Flip through the class that you want to play until you find the quick build sidebar. I will admit I wish the book was a little bit more like Pathfinder 2 rule book where the quick build information that you need is right on the first page of the class description. It's not just fine it and then look at the first item in the list and those are the two key attributes for the class. Prioritize those two attributes and use the Tales of the Valiant standard array of 16, 14, 14, 13, 10, and 8. That's 16, 14, 14, 13, 10, and 8. Assign values and modifiers to your six attributes. Okay, that's step one done. Step two, class features. Find the section within your class documentation labeled class features and jot down all of the key information there. This includes your hit points. You can just use the average, don't bother rolling. Saves. And equipment. In some cases, specific equipment isn't provided, uh, and instead it's just like a type of armor or weapon. Like a simple weapon or martial weapon and so on. If you know your D and D weapons really well, you can write in a specific weapon. But if you don't, then just make note of the type, and we'll fill it in later. Personally, with weapons and armors, I often just let the player choose right before the first combat begins. I find that pretty easy and actually kind of exciting. Other standard values at first level: your speed is thirty feet. Your AC is 10 plus your dex modifier, unless you have a bonus from your armor. But again, we can catch that later when we look up what armor we're going to use. Passive insight is 10 plus wisdom. Passive investigation is 10 plus int uh, intelligence. Passive perception is 10 plus wisdom. And proficiency bonus is plus 2. Step three, proficiencies and heritage and background. Okay, we're kind of skipping over most of this. So what you're going to do instead is pick four skill proficiencies. That's two that you get pretty much standard with your class. And then just pick two other and call it a custom heritage. Don't bother selecting a heritage or a background from the book. You don't have time for it. Instead, encourage players to just let a heritage and background emerge through gameplay. You can either formalize that later with like custom bonuses that kind of fit the theme, or you can just use it as a prompt during roleplay. Like, hey, remember I, I, I thought that maybe I grew up in the slums during that first session, so could I get a bonus to avoid losing gold from that pickpocket? That kind of thing. Step four, lineage. Unlike heritage and background, you do have to choose a lineage. This is what you were born as, like an elf, a human, a dwarf, an orc, a siderian, a kobold, and so on. Turn to page 106, choose a lineage. 
write down all of the special features that you get with that lineage. It's not usually a whole lot, but it's like little things, uh, elves don't sleep, they meditate instead, kobolds are really good at tinkering, and so on. Especially if you encourage players to develop and use a heritage and a background, I find that this actually adds quite a bit to the roleplay. Step five, talents. I find talents really fun, so I do take the extra time to jot down the bonuses afforded by a talent, and anyway it's kind of easy because there's a talent suggested in that quick build sidebar back in your class. So just look that up again and add the corresponding features to the character sheet. Step six, spells. Spells are really well organized in Tales of the Valiant, thanks to the sources of magic. If you're building, this is a little bit like Pathfinder 2, it's really nice. If you're building a spellcaster, look at the paragraph describing their spellcasting ability uh, over in their class section. And look for what source their magic uses. It can be either divine, arcane, weird, or primordial. Then turn to page 246, super easy to remember, it's like literally 246, and pick out as many cantrips and first circle spells afforded by, uh, to your class. Standard values for the spell sheet along the top, your ability is the attribute you use to cast the spells. So that's probably like intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, depending on what has been told to you by your class. The save DC is 8, plus your proficiency bonus, plus your spell casting ability. So either int, wisdom, or charisma, depending on your class. This is a number usually something greater than 10, probably, because it's, it's basically the number that an enemy has to roll to try to resist your spell when they're allowed to. Bonus is your PB, that's your proficiency bonus, plus your, plus your ability. This is a number usually around maybe five or so, assuming that you have a good plus two or plus three on your spell casting ability, and then your proficiency bonus, of course, is a plus two. So it's either going to be probably a four or a five if you've assigned your uh, attributes prioritizing the things that you were told to prioritize in the quick build. Step seven, gear and gold. If you had to use placeholders for weapons because you don't know your weapons and armor by heart, turn to page 136 to get the stats for armor and page 138 for weapons. Choose however many armors and weapons you have been given in your class build and then write the stats for them in the attacks and the armor sections of your character sheet. Confusingly, the columns in the weapon table and the attack uh, slots in the character sheet are reversed. So in the weapons table, weapon options and properties, weapon options is listed before properties, and then in the character sheet, properties is listed before options. So just it doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent, but just be aware that yes, it is it is backwards. Give yourself this much coin. Three gold pieces, ten silver pieces, and ten copper pieces. That's just a rough average across all the classes. Some people get more, some people get less, depending on their backgrounds and their heritages and so on, but honestly, this is a, a good amount to start with. You, you have a little bit to spend for food and lodging and bribes as needed, but you're not super, super rich yet. You need to go adventuring for that. And then finally, write down everything in, listed in the Dungeoneers pack on page 142. Step whatever. Play the game. Okay, so that was 
less than 12 minutes. Um, there's plenty of room for experienced players who are familiar with a class uh, to choose a heritage and a background or to take advantage of some little class feature that I just kind of skip over. But the important idea is that everyone at the table makes a playable character in the minimum amount of time, and the character feels like a fantasy RPG character. You get a couple of special features from your class and your talents, but mostly this character sheet concentrates on the universal sort of workhorse of 5th edition, certainly, and that is rolling a d20 and adding some attribute modifiers and proficiency bonus to what you've just done. That's 90% of the dice rolling portion of this game, and this character sheet gives you everything you need for that kind of gameplay. You will acquire more features as you play, and you'll have plenty of time to get overwhelmed by additional rules and little abilities that'll just keep getting added on. This is an old-school feeling type of character that'll play great with Tales of Valiant. Have fun, thanks for watching.